Hello my beautiful nerds, it is time for part two of our Hufflepuff gown, otherwise known as Petticoat Purgatory. For this we're going to need gold tulle for our overskirt, cotton for our first petticoat, as well as stiff petticoat netting. If you follow me on TikTok, you may recognize this pattern. This is the Slytherin petticoat pattern. I did not have any paper on hand, so I couldn't draft a new one. So I just took this one in on the sides a little bit and added to the hem to accommodate the hoop skirt. And then I used my big glorious mat. I don't know if I mentioned in my last video, this mat is from Joann's. It's massive, so it works great for skirts. If you don't have a surface that you can use a rotary cutter on, you're totally good to use scissors. Just make sure that you're using weights and that you're cutting everything on a flat surface. You want your fabric to lay as flat as possible so that you get nice even cuts. Once all the pieces for my main petticoat were cut out, I drafted this tiny little skirt for my underskirt. I did not have paper, so I just kind of eyeballed it with some Taylor's chalk and a measure. Please don't do this. Please make sure you're using paper or at least a good cotton. <laughs> For your, for your template. This ripstop was super slippery and it was a nightmare to work with and this was a poor decision, but desperate times call for desperate measures. On to surging. So remember, I, I, if you've seen my last video, you know that I was struggling with surging because I had to like hand tie all of these ends. Well, I found a new trick. So you surge to the end, take the little tail at the end there and you're gonna lower the foot onto it, surge a few stitches, then take that original tail, bring it back over and kind of surge it into the seam on the side. I, I found this on YouTube. I can't remember who showed me. I feel so bad. I will try and find a creator and credit them, but it made it so much easier. It's not perfect. I noticed that if you don't get those first few stitches, you get this tiny little hole. You'll kind of see my finger poke through there. But I think with practice like this, this could be something beautiful, okay? Next, I surged my rib stop. This was actually left over from the Slytherin dress as well and just got that put together. This tends to scrunch a little, so I always leave a little bit longer of a tail and then just kind of adjust the tension. I then clipped my petticoat pieces together and stitched all of my seams to the five eighths seam allowance. I left an eight inch space on the very back seam just at the top there. This is so I can insert my corset and also so that the skirt is wide enough to slip over your hips when you put it on. I did the same with this mini skirt for the underskirt clipped it together, stitched it. Ripstop is super slippery, so I always use the seam guide just to make sure that my seams are nice and even. And then it was time to prep the netting for the petticoat. So I measure out my fabric by taking the circumference of the skirt and multiplying it by three to four. Then I clip and flip the fabric to make this little bolt that I can cut through. For the Slytherin dress, I did not think of doing this. It took forever to cut everything by hand. This was way faster and I got much more even pieces, so totally recommend doing this. Once all of your netting is prepped, it's time to gather. I have a gathering foot on my serger. I tested it out. This netting is way too slippery, so I ended up having to just baste everything and then slowly gather things by hand. It is an absolute nightmare, and this is why I call petticoats petticoat purgatory. Hot tip, pre-wrap a bunch of bobbins so that you don't run out in the middle of sewing. Deep breath, appreciate Bobo, let's go. So, for gathering, I like to use just whatever random object is laying next to me so that I can wrap my thread around it. I have wrapped my thread around my fingers before and I've cut off the circulation. It's a nightmare, it's terrifying. So don't do that. Just wrap it around a mat, random object, it works. Next, you're just gonna gently pull it along this thread leg and just slowly slide it down. It's gonna take forever. Your arms are gonna get tired if you feel it start to tug. Don't tug too hard, otherwise the thread will snap and you'll have to restitch everything. You'll see that I kind of measured out my fabric, made sure that my gathering was as long as I needed it to be. And once you hit that length you need, in this case it was three feet, stop, tie it off, and then just even out the rest of your gathering until it's a nice little kind of a ruffle looking thing. Rather than stitch like one long 30 yard stretch, I ended up separating them into smaller pieces just so that if the thread did snap, I didn't have to start over <laughs> on a 30 yard piece. So I separated my pieces into two piles, one for the top tier, one for the bottom tier, and then stitched the small pieces together to create two long lines of these lovely ruffles. Next, I used a sewing gauge and some Taylor's chalk to mark a line I think it was about four inches above the base of the skirt. This is where I'm gonna attach the first tier of, I'm gonna call them ruffles. <laughs> Next, I made this long strip of cloth to attach my netting to. I searched it just to make sure that nothing unravels and to kind of reinforce it as well. 
Next, I clipped my first round of netting to the long strip of fabric. I also changed the pressure foot pressure on my machine because I don't want it to be too strong that it's gonna mess up all the gathering that I have very carefully placed. I would recommend using a different foot. I just used an A foot. This was a bad choice. It got caught up in the netting and I had to be super careful and I was constantly stopping the machine. So if you can, use a guard over your foot just so that your your presser foot doesn't get caught in it. So don't, don't make the same mistake I did. Learn from me and it'll be a lot easier for you. Next, I attached everything to the skirt. I did not pin this in. I didn't want to have to worry about pulling out pins constantly. And I have almost broken a needle running over pins in the past. So I just carefully lined up that surged edge on our little netting strip with the tailor chalk marks that I had made on the skirt and just lined everything up and it worked out. Next, I clipped my second piece of netting to the very base of the skirt and stitched it on. And Y'all, can I just say, petticoats are very easy in theory. They are, like you, you saw the materials. There's barely any materials that go into this. The hard part of petticoats is just sticking with it. You're doing a bunch of redundant stuff like gathering and then stitching it on and it takes forever, but it's worth it, I promise. I totally forgot to film measuring out all this tool, but essentially same thing that I did with the netting. You're just gonna do three to four times the circumference of your skirt. I actually doubled this netting up since it's so Thin. So I think I ended up using like 30 yards of this tool. It's nuts. And this was difficult to work with. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's absolutely beautiful, but it was like hurting cats. Like it, it was impossible to manage. I was just constantly fidgeting with it, but it, it does look really dreamy. It's like a golden cloud behind my sewing machine. Anyways, when it's time to gather it, do the same thing you did with the netting. Just wrap it around a random object and pull gently. Listen gently this tool i was terrified it was gonna rip so i went extra slow and extra gentle i also compared it to that tiny little mini skirt i made just to make sure that everything was gonna line up and that i didn't have too much or too little material and it worked out great next i made sure my gathering was nice and even and clipped it to the little skirt that i made and then just stitched away. You can see I abandoned my seam guide to the right there. It ended up getting in the way too much, and so I just kind of had to wing it, which sometimes you gotta do. But here is our first petticoat, our little two-tiered petticoat. She's gonna give us a little bit more of an A-line silhouette. Here is the tool overskirt. She adds a little bit of volume, and it makes sure that the hoops in the hoop skirt don't poke out. And then, just for fun, I draped the fabric just to give you a little bit of a taste of what this gown is gonna look like when it's finished i am so excited and i couldn't have done it without you see y'all next week want to help me bring my creations to life want to vote to see your favorite creation be brought to life go follow me on tiktok and if you haven't already subscribe to this channel love you beautiful nerds